You want to see how I made this? Stay tuned and grab your watercolors if you want to join along. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Eddie here, Eddie Makes Art, and today I'm going to show you how to watercolor this buckhead deer. So, uh, what I did was I just found an image online that I liked as far as it's, it was just like a black and white outline. Um, and then I used carbon paper to um, transfer my outline to the watercolor paper. I'm using a cold press textured paper. This is Arches, I believe, 140, 140 pound. Yes, Arches 140 pound. Uh, fine grain cold press and it's not the full sheet I'm trimmed it down um, and I'll use that other piece for something else I picked out five colors I'm gonna use and I really I kind of have an idea of how I want to paint this but it's not the typical colors of a buckhead deer because I don't do typical colors on typical things so um, first thing let's go over the colors so I have the Whole Bean Artist watercolor in Mars Violet, it's W313. I want to call it like a Merlot color, Merlot wine. So, so you'll see that in a moment. And then I'm using the Whole Bean watercolor W210. This is Crimson Lake, and this is a beautiful shade of red, almost on the rosy side. Um, and in the Whole Bean again, I'm using the Prussian Blue W297. And that's a really um, nice shade of Prussian. It's a, I believe it is transparent. Yes. And these first two are, yep. So the only one that's not transparent so far is the Mars Violet. Um, and then in the Cotman watercolor collection, this is from Windsor Newton. I'm using the Indigo. It's one of my favorite Indigos out there um, of all the ones I've tried. I just, I just really like um, this particular shade of Indigo. It's from their number one series. As you can see there, it's a smaller one, but it packs a punch. And then the final color is some white gouache. I may use this to lighten up areas or, you know, maybe if it's, if I decide to do a snowy scene, I can use that for snow. But like I said, I haven't decided what I'm going to do exactly. I kind of have an idea. Um, and then the other thing I have here is my dusty, crusty <laughs> container of kosher salt that I will try and use to create some um, really cool like blooming effects on the painting. But like I said, as this process goes, it'll develop. Um, that's just how I work. And uh, so a lot of this video is gonna be silent because um, we were talking about this in the PM Artist Studio live stream this past Thursday uh, where uh, Patricia was doing watercolors and somebody said, uh, just brought up the word snooting, that Patricia was snooting into her art. And yeah, that's what happens, especially with watercolor, because it's it's a Zen process. And so you tend to like put your head down and just really get into it and you forget everything else that's going on, which is great, to be honest. So um, yeah, I'm gonna get started. Um, and if anything, what I'll do is I'll do a voiceover um, telling you about, you know, walking through what I am um, showing you on the paper. Because sometimes it's easier for me to do it and then I tell you how I did it for, for watercolor painting. Sit tight and uh, I'll show you uh, what I'm going to do. The technique I'm going to be using mostly during this process is the wet and wet technique, which means I wet the paper with just plain water and then I add watercolor to that. And starting along the edge, I'm just going to start adding some of the Mars Violet watercolor in um, just small amounts along the edge. And you'll see it starts to get pulled in towards the center and it fades out as it goes into the center. And then um, any of the other space, I'm going to fill in with the Crimson Lake and hopefully give it um, kind of a, a looking, it'll have a um, depth to it.
Another thing to keep in mind when you're doing a wet and wet technique is the humidity in your space. And today it was very dry. So I had to go back a few times and add water to the paper um, because it had dried on me. So, you know, um, you kind of have to work quickly in this process um, because you don't want to put too, too much water on the paper because then you create puddles. So just keep that in mind and um, it's a good uh, water control practice. So I'm starting on the second set of antlers and what you will notice is as I start adding the watercolor to the, well, the paper, um, some of my areas have dried way too fast, which means I didn't put enough water down to begin with. Um, but you'll be able to see how I remedy that. And basically it's just adding a little bit more water at a time with your brush and really um, brushing down the area a couple times, kind of massaging it with your brush um, without necessarily adding a ton more water, you know. You just wanna add enough where the paper's gonna stay wet enough to take in the paint and spread it out nicely um, as it did on the right hand side.
this section, what I'm doing is I'm going to mix up the slightly darker versions of my Crimson Lake and my Mars Violet paints. Um, and I'll be using the blues to mix in with those to get a, um, a darker version of those two colors so that as I move down the head of the book, it will um, get slightly darker, um, more into a purpley shade. And you see I'm, I'm using a scrap piece of watercolor paper to swatch out um, what I'm mixing to make sure I get the right darkness and it's not too, too dark. So now I'm adding the Prussian blue to the buckhead and the, using the same technique, wet and wet, and adding um, the paint along the edges of the outline so that the water um, pulls the, the color into the center of the piece so that it'll join up um, more naturally with the violets and reds that are right up above. And then I gently tap around those areas with some more watercolor and you know, not so strong and allow that those to mix together and they won't, it'll, won't create a harsh line. Um, and it'll look like it's flowing a lot better. And as I continue, I'm just going to outline and darken up the edges and then try and keep the center less dark. And you see here, my paper's drying. So I tested it out and so I'm, I'm doing a better job of keeping an eye on that. And so all I do is just add some fresh water and um, massage it in and make sure it's even.
So I've decided I am going to use the uh, kosher salt. And so I'm just going to do it on the head of the buck, buckhead, and not the antlers. And I'm just dropping it in where um, it's wet and it's mostly wet. And now you see how it's dried and it's gave, it's given us this really cool blooms. Um, like in the ears, it's lightened up the ears and then it made the, gave us some of those cool textures right in the face. Um, and I'm going to use those to my advantage by using them as a sort of a foggy kind of wintry background. And now back up to the antlers, I'm going to add a second layer of um, the same colors, the Mars Violet and the Crimson Lake. And what I'm doing now is I'm just re-wetting the paper um, with plain water, but just, you know, when you do that, just make sure you're not rubbing too hard. You're just laying a thin layer of water um, and then come back in with your pigment, uh, your watercolor, and um, add another layer of um, the paints and it gives you a richer um, look. Now at the bottom of the antler here, what I'm doing is I'm just taking a wet brush um, that's slightly damp and just blending that out so that it's a little bit smoother and not so harsh and I can blend it right into that more purpley color.
So my next step is I'm going to outline the blue areas with um, a, a darker version of my blue mixture, which is the indigo and the ultramarine, I'm sorry, the Prussian blue. Um, and they're just going along the edge and in some areas thicken it up, creating um, shadows and depth along um, the face of the buck. So now what I'm going to do to fill in the space is I'm going to create layers of trees and I'm going to start with the back row of trees and I'm just lightly tapping in some color. Um, it's mainly, um, it's a very pale wash, that's how I would describe it, of my blues. 
And then I'm just dropping it in a little here and creating trees, nothing, you know, too fancy. And I'm going to then take a brush with plain water and just smooth out the bottom of that row of trees and then let that dry and then come back in and do a second layer closer um, to the forefront um, and make that layer darker. And then I'm going to do that again. So I'll do that three times. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to turn the camera back on for the second row, but it's, it's all pretty much the same and you get to see me finish um, the entire piece.
Now we can't forget the buck's ears, so we're gonna put some trees in his little ears. Now this is my favorite part. I'm taking um, thicker versions of the paints that I'm using and I'm gonna just splatter some different splatters all over this painting. And that will take care of that boo-boo I made on the top of the paper earlier. So I decided to go ahead and use the white gouache um, as part of the splatters and um, I, I cover the 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 buckhead's face and because I want to give the, the antlers more of the splatter than the um, the actual face. Well, this painting is done. So I'm just gonna sign it and thank you for watching. And I hope you really enjoyed this process video and hit the like button if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, and leave me a comment. I will see you in the next video.